like to talk about. Whatever's in the news, whatever's not in the news, <laughs> we'll make it news. <laughs> Today I have a very special guest. I'm so excited that my my good buddy Travis going to be on the show today. What's up, Travis? How you doing? What's up? I'm doing good. Happy to have some uh, some socialization in my <laughs> life right now. It's nice to see another human face, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> it's nice to have people listen to me speak. You know, right? Not just your cat or your dog or <laughs> no. or in my case, just the no one. Right. The, the void that is my studio, Koreatown apartment. <laughs> I wonder if there's like a like a feedback loop that we've all started to create where we just are talking to ourselves. <laughs> and uh we're I've always done that to be fair but uh <laughs> you know a lot of a lot of naked dance parties i mean a of... well that's what i think like i have said since i'm so glad that i live alone i never have dirty laundry <laughs> <laughs> that's true there's never a mess when it's your shit you know right. what i mean it's not a mess i just put it there and it's right. dirty <laughs> exactly i know where I like everything it. is dude if you could see my sink right now i have <laughs> I have like one clean dish left. Oh my god! Yeah. No more spoons or forks, just these puppies. That's why I just whittle it down to like two dishes. I just go. <laughs> I'm just gonna use these two dishes, and I'll just I'll just rinse a little water over it. It'll be fine. I mean, I mean, we're in the apocalypse, right? I'm just eating out of cans, and you know, I'm eating I'm eating what I got, what I can find, scavenge. <laughs> I've been diving through the dumpster of my apartment complex recently, just for fun. Yeah, there's some goodies in there. What did you get last time? Uh, old a half eaten box of craft macaroni. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. The half noodles eaten. had been boiled but returned to the box, so you know, it was easy. Mac easy and snack. <laughs> snack and cheese. Mac and cheese has a diminishing return though. I feel like you gotta eat it while it's hot, or else it's just <laughs> it turns into I a I mean brick. you can say what you want. I'll eat any mac and cheese anytime. <laughs> Indeed. That's my motto, and that's I live by that rule. That's true. He's got all of his t shirts are branded that I've seen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's up, Angie? Hello, welcome. Today we have a very special guest, my friend Travis. Travis, now, I'm excited to have you on the show. You're a fun guy, like oh, like thanks. any old, old mushroom. Uh, <laughs> I mush asked you. Get it? It's a mushroom. No. Nope. It's a fungus question. Okay. Uh, it's a fungus joke. So, a I got a question one. for you. <laughs> the show, it just flies by the seat of the pants, man. We just go. We go and we don't look back. <laughs> Oh, you don't have to wear pants these days. Remind me not to stand up. <laughs> you don't even have to stand up anymore. That's why I have wheels <laughs> on all my chairs. <laughs> <laughs> so today, I wanted to talk to you specifically about uh, tabletop gaming because that is so much fun. That's what we did as kids. It's fun. And you want you want to make me look as nerdy as possible on your television show, I so I can look like a decent human being. I like it. Doesn't spend of his time painting and gluing together little plastic models dude and uh being a dweebus that's productive right now that's called being productive in this world. i mean it's something right now honestly i'm grateful that i discovered this hobby like a year ago because at this point in history it is the best hobby that i can think of to have really Dude, just, I mean, it's like, it's been like four or five months and I still have like uh, such a backlog of projects that I want to work on, you yeah. know, like that's, I could be in quarantine for, for years and, and, uh, probably stay engaged. That's so funny. It's so true. Cause it's like, never give a creative person a lot of time. Cause then they just gotta <laughs> right. fill it all up. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, dude. My brain's been running. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I just collecting pick... that unemployment. Right. And, you know, I can feel way better about the whole situation. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude. It's uh, sometimes th this is what this is a show is good about. Uh, for it's for trying to remember that we're all in the same boat together and that we can, fucking. Uh, I'm sorry, I curse on my own show. I never curse, but, but I'm bringing it out of you. I'm are, bring it out of me. You are I'm a, a bad influence. You're a bad influence in the best way. Um, oh, thank you. I just picture you as Steve Carell with your little paints and the I am painting your blue pants silver. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I've been rewatching Parks and Rec because I already went through the office and I have to have my comfort television in these trying times. That's a good and, one. And uh, the last episode I was watching was the one where uh, Ben is out of work and he starts doing like a claymation project. And they just really started coming for me. They were like, you must be really depressed if you're spending all of your free time just, you know, <laughs> making these little toys as a grown man. And they were right. They're right. <laughs> but it's you know, totally... And completely justified. 
on account of the state yeah. of the world it's right fun. now. So, yeah. It's fun. I'm yeah, not what's... too cool to, to admit that I enjoy playing with toys. Indeed. And this, you know, I've always loved toys and I'm always going to love toys. Toys are for playing. That's what they, Dude, that's what they're there for. Like with. my most precious memories as a young, young boy uh, were like just playing with my action figures for like hours on end. Like, you know, just creating scenarios, telling stories, really. That's all we were doing, right? Like we work yeah. in the film business now and we tell stories professionally. Um, but that's really all I've ever been doing. And now like gaming is my like main hobby. And I try and remind people who are less, uh, you know, who don't game as much or even people who do, who get too consumed with like the nitty gritty of, of what it can mean. It's really, it's just community storytelling. It's just, we're going to sit around this table and we're going to choose whatever game we play as our, uh, driving, uh, storytelling device, our narrative device. And we're going to roll some dice and we're going to make some, you know, strategic decisions. But really at the end of the day, what matters is like, oh, remember that, that, that roll and like you made this move and you killed that guy. And like, oh. and like really at the end of the day, all you're doing is like trying to like tell a little story with your friends. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And win. But like that's because <laughs> the best winning. end of your story is winning. Yeah. Right. But even when you lose, you can lose epically. Like, you know, gaming's ain't, fun. I don't know. I'm into it. Ain't no second place. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, you uh, can get second place, but I'm going to talk shit for the rest of your life. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I remember playing uh, D&D as a kid. The first time, though, I played D&D, I was very confused because there was, like, pencils and paper involved. And I was right. and I was like, wait, are, like, we taking a, are we taking a test? <laughs> and I was scantrons? Like, oh. Last time I played D&D, they busted out the Scantron. So it was like, oh. A Scantron? <laughs> I would <laughs> no, just, <that's> <laughs> I was like, fill in the letter C. <laughs> For all of them. Yeah, every time. How many hit points is that? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, but do you remember the, the, Scantrons? I do remember Scantrons and the number two pencil. Yeah. That's a, that's a staple. How grateful are you that you don't ever have to fill out another Scantron again in your life? Ever. <sighs> you will never, ever have to touch one of those shitty little green pieces of paper again. We accomplished something in our lives. We did. We graduated we, high school. We graduated high school, never have to... Fill out a damn oh Scantron again. That's, I've never looked at life that way, <laughs> Travis. You, you... <laughs> right, me neither. Until now. Until like, you know, I, philo I philosophize and uh, I play games these days. <laughs> Cheers. I think we're all that. probably doing a lot of philosophy. Tell me the correct word t tense. Uh, phil philosophort. Philosophers. We're philosophorting a lot these days, right? We are. I think everybody is just taking this time to look inward and uh, become better people or just r remain being dicks, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't just know. become the worst versions of themselves. I know. This is like the perfect time for people to incubate and become worse or become yep. better. Uh, let me say hi to some people like my sister, Veronica. Hello. Welcome to the show. And Ron Pertie has arrived. Hello, Ron. Condi Land, hey, Ron. Eva. Ron's going to be on the show. Sister? Ron's going to be on the and show. Ron? next week and i am privileged to be on ron's show as well so i'm excited to have ron to talk movies on tuesday and kelsey hello kelsey welcome kelsey has a show tomorrow night if anybody's interested you can uh check out kelsey alabama on instagram kelsey alabama that's a pretty dope ron perty is on multiple platforms over here let's see uh, i believe i said Hello to everyone. Anybody have a question for our friend Travis, who is into tabletop gaming and Parks and Rec? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have a question for you. Oh, wait, okay. here's one. Uh, Ron says, I'm a big fan of Battlestar Galactica board game. Okay. I know that's not the topic, but oh, well. You know, that's a kind of a reverse <laughs> of the topic, which is pretty neat, because there are a lot of movies that have become board games. Um, are there any ones that, any movies in particular? And board games that have become movies. Indeed, like Battleship and... I thought I was having a fever dream that Marlon Wayans was in a version of Dungeons and Dragons. I thought that was not real. <laughs> and then I Googled it this morning and indeed he was. So. <laughs> Wait, there, what are you talking about? There's a Dungeons and Dragons movie? There's a Dungeons and Marlon and Wayans is in it. Yes. I'm well, my not... whole world just turned upside down. So I'm going to. First it's Scantrons. Now it's Marlon Wayans in Dungeons and Dragons. It's. I know what I'm doing immediately after this show ends. <laughs> Uh, finding where I can watch that masterpiece <laughs> where you can destroy every copy of it uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, 
or and that. speaking of Battlestar Galactica, I've never yeah. seen it, but it's been on my list. I mentioned it to my girlfriend like two days ago that I need to start watching it. You um, do. It's awesome. Yeah. The re the the remake, right? Like the two thousands remake. Yeah, it was like two thousand four oh. through seven or something okay. like that. It, yeah, it's it's excellent. It's an excellent show. Okay. Except the first half of the fourth season because it was the writer's strike back then. Sure. Yeah. I'll, and, it'll take me a while to get there, so. Yeah. But the first three seasons are just really incredible. Um oh, yeah. All right. So is there a board, is there a movie that has turned into a board game that's like super excellent that everybody loves to play? A movie that's turned into a board game. So probably second most popular miniatures game, I think. Um, and that's such a Star Wars game. There's lots, obviously, Star Wars stuff that people love. Uh, but that game's awesome. You just get little, like, X-Wings, TIE Fighters, any ship that you want, basically, from the universe exists. You can uh, fly Boba Fett's uh, Slave One, right? Slave yes. One is Boba? Yeah. Uh, and you uh, battle your friends or your competitive tournament grinders uh, with your little space fleet from Star Wars. That one's cool. I have Star uh, Wars Monopoly. <laughs> oh, there you go. But that's not the that's, same. Uh, not quite the same. <laughs> no. I'm sure it's okay. Lord of the Rings has some awesome games. Um, there's a really epic older game called War of the Ring. That's like an awesome two-player epic board game. It takes like six hours to play where you pretty much retell the entire tale of the trilogy, of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, starting from like the gathering of the fellowship all the way to hopefully if you succeed in your quest uh, destroying the ring at Mount Mordor uh, that's an awesome fucking game one person plays as like the dark forces of Sauron and the other person plays as the fellowship and friends uh, yeah, who, there's some who gets to play there. who gets to play Sean Bean and die every time <laughs> me that's my role yeah. <laughs> yeah I just watch my friends play and I just tell them I'm Sean yeah hey I, I'll be playing the part of Sean Bean I will die <laughs> tragically at some point tonight <laughs> for the day yeah. dude that's oh my god man that those last scenes in fellowship were like so shaped sad. me as yeah game, dude like it's also just like they were the cool is that like the coolest i just remember seeing fellowship for the first time and like i was probably what year did fellowship come out you're good with years do you know roughly 1999 2000 around 99 christmas 99 okay so i was like eight or nine like and i had never obviously i never read lord of the rings i didn't know how to read yet at that time in my life uh, why not why <laughs> not <laughs> i didn't learn that until about I, at the age of 24 i learned how to read um so back then it was just movies I had to start collecting lord of the rings action figures after that oh man i love lord of the rings it's pretty amazing lord of the rings definitely became uh I think it was competing essentially with the Star Wars prequels at the time. And the, because the Star Wars prequels kind of biffed it, people gravitated yeah. <laughs> toward Lord of the Rings at that time. Just a little, a little bit. Just, just a little. Took nose down. I don't even hate the Hobbit movies, honestly. I know that's blasphemy to some, but. You don't, you don't they, hate, you do? I don't hate them. I mean, obviously they're not as good as the, the original trilogy, but like, let's put it this way. The Hobbit movies are way better, uh, of a runner up to that amazing trilogy than the Star Wars prequels are to the original yeah, Star Wars trilogy. That's true. Like, I'd rather watch the Hobbit movies all day. Like I over just, th That's know. that's fair. I I remember just like barrels going down a river for 3 hours. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of what I remember. Or do you also that. remember Jar Jar Binks? Uh, <laughs> do you also remember I do. Uh, <laughs> Anakin Skywalker's laughable acting and dialogue. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> We could go tit for tat on these, but uh, no one wins. No one wins we, in this battle. We can indeed. Uh, Will is here. Is this Will? What's up? Thank you for giving us some heads up on some of the uh, the Instagram. Uh, let me know, Will, if on Instagram the volume has improved. I have a, a weird little setup here that you can see on on Instagram where I have a headphone against the microphone, which is how they do it in the biz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Veronica asks... Excellent, pertinent question. Jumanji. I didn't even include that on the uh, thumbnail. But th that's a board game. That's yeah. A movie. Was it a movie first or a board game first? So it had to be a movie first. Um, okay. It had to be a movie first. I think it's a book. Or, is it a book? I don't know. It was definitely a movie first, though. And I know they made a board game. I've never what? played it. It doesn't work magically, um, from what I understand. It doesn't transport you into the jungle. Oh, Okay. I, um, I still haven't seen the new ones. I really want to. I hear they're really good, actually, with the, 
the run. I don't know. I haven't seen them. I tried to watch the newest one, the first of the newest one, and it wasn't for me. Okay. Uh, but I also really love the original. So, like, that's a yeah. tall order to try and, like, one-up it. You know, it's not yeah. going to happen for me. Yeah. But, dude, I think Jumanji could... I, th- I haven't played the game that exists. I'm guessing, I, from my fairly extensive board game knowledge, that it's probably more of a family-oriented kind of casual um, like game that you pick up a target for like a night with the kids. Um, that being said, I would imagine that if somebody really wanted to get that property and make like a sick ass like adult like strategy game around it, it's probably it could probably be pretty cool for people who love the movie. Yeah, uh, I can't wait till they come out with Jenga. <laughs> the movie. Jenga the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, they're gonna. Who's gonna star in that one? Uh, the Rock. The Rock just the Rock. Okay. <laughs> he shows up all the time. He's just gonna be like pushing a, a block out of the way. That'll be it. That'll be like hours of. Yeah, The Rock is block. the correct answer to that question every time, right? Who's gonna star in that franchise? The Rock. Yeah, that's like the placeholder. It's an eighty percent chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is the percent chance that The Rock will appear in this sequel? A high percent chance. High percent chance. Jumanji is good, though. I like that. Somebody should come up with a sick-ass Jumanji game. That that would be uh, that would be good. I'd definitely play. Uh, let's see. Let's just check some of these comments here. Angie says, does Goosebumps count? I had the board game and the books. It was a TV show and, and a movie, kind of. That's true. I remember the Goosebumps. Yeah. I think my sister watched the Goosebumps Veronica, verify that, whether or not the that's true. Uh, the show, yeah. If you don't like the Goosebump books, get out of here. <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> what are you doing? I'll see myself out. Yeah, come on. <laughs> when I learned to read at the tender age of 24, all I did was collect Goosebumps books. And yeah. just chug through them. <laughs> at the age of... One year, for the last four years, I've read four Goosebumps books. Goosebumps taught me how to read. <laughs> yeah. was, no, Goosebumps a... are awesome. And the movie is pretty good i think if you come at it from like the perspective of like a kid's horror movie obviously right. if you're looking for uh you know, i think it's fun i think it does the job dude jack black never fails yeah he doesn't he's got an excellent channel too if you uh jablinski gaming jablinski games, games yeah. yeah my girlfriend got me hooked on him i haven't watched him for a while but yeah dude that man is just like he's living life right you know yeah he's a tour de force from what he shows who knows but like he seems to enjoy what he does he's funny as all hell He's he, doing his thing, you know? He's, he's amazing. A, and he's really, he, he involves his kids in such a cool way and creative way that his kids basically film and edit his show now. And his kids are yeah. 14 or, so, or his around. His kids seem cool, too. They, <laughs> so, how are you not cool if Jack Black's your dad? It's yeah. not going to happen. And they're really good. They're really funny, talented editors, yeah. too. So uh, he just is a like kind of a source of material. And then the kids like shape it into his channel, which is amazing. Man, I would love to. I would love to be like live in that guest house, you know, on his <laughs> and just like see what happens. That's right. got to be a fun place. That's got to be. That's got to be a fun house. I feel like it's it's not too far from here because I see a, in a lot of his uh, his videos he'll go to taco stands that are right in this little neighborhood and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I okay. know that place. I know the place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because he's he's cool. He's not the type to live in like the hills. I don't think you know. Like he's probably like. It's probably like a East LA kind of guy. Yeah, definitely. Which means he's cool, everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, East LA is the cool side. West side is the terrible. The second coolest place in LA. <laughs> yeah. Koreatown number one. Um, let's see. Battleship, Jake A. Jake A was our guest on Monday. If you guys want to go back and check out that show, we talked about Jesus. Uh, he oh. meant, <laughs> we talked about oh. Jesus. Yeah, we prayed. We, uh, we oh, prayed about yeah. Jesus. And... Um, <laughs> I, I'll never do it again. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, probably not. Everyone, you can have your own personal Jesus. Jake A says Battleship was a board game before it was a movie. Yes, indeed. I actually like that movie a lot. Maybe not a Did lot, you but I like rule against watching Jessica Biel movies, but that's just a personal thing. Is it why is that? Is it because her they're name all is bad. Almost... <laughs> if she's in a movie, it's bad. That's just guaranteed. Oh, that's a bummer. I didn't know that it about sucks. her. Yeah. Is it not her fault? Barely? I don't know. I don't know. I, it must be, right? <laughs> As a gamer, I have to look at odds. 
I yeah. have to look at, you know, what my chances are in any given situation when I'm making a decision. Right. And chances are, if every movie she's in is bad, it's probably at least there's something going there's something on in with her. Maybe she Maybe. just has horrible taste in projects. That could be it. She could be a great actress with a horrible track record and a bad agent and just making bad decisions. Fair enough. I think there are people like Tilda Swinton, however, who are always good, no matter even if the movie's bad. <laughs> She's so like I feel like I don't know if she if if Jessica yeah. Biel is, is Jessica Biel always good still? Is she still No. Okay. No. Um I, we're yeah. we're check we're we're checking on the merits of Jessica Biel's acting. I sound like a hater because I am. And <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb and say Jessica Biel's probably... If you're watching Jessica, I mean, I, I love you. <laughs> He's like, I, I would not... Smirch your name. I would not your decline an, an invitation to dinner with Jessica Biel, is what you're saying. No, no. <laughs> well, with anyone, though. I'm going to dinner with anyone at this point. I'm so lonely. Even baby Dr. Yoda Fauci. Uh, hello, everybody. Wow. <laughs> uh, I just want to say that the opinions herein about Jessica Biel and her acting are ours and ours alone. <laughs> this does not reflect at all on the on Hollywood itself. Wow. Uh, remember to wear a mask. Okay. He wears glasses. <laughs> You're losing wears... your shit, aren't you, Aristotle? <laughs> I'm totally losing my mind. It's You've great. lost it. We've lost it. Baby. Baby, Dr. Baby Yoda Fauci is incredible. Dr. He's, uh, Baby Yoda Fauci, dude. Yeah, he's like, uh, he's, son. he's like, did you see me throw out that first pitch last night? It was amazing. I <laughs> I was aiming for Dagobah. <laughs> <laughs> they said, throw it over home plate. I said, I'm shooting for the stars, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to play catch with his daddy. Yeah. <laughs> In heaven. What? No, good golly. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I brought it down. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dagobah. <laughs> Um, dude, Robert T. Is Jedi heaven, dude. Don't don't die. Yeah, no one wants to move there. It seems like a lovely place. Seems like a lovely it's a place trash to move. planet. <laughs> I know. It's a trash system. You know. <laughs> you you've got to be, like, well, be the Gandhi of your universe to live there. Listen, we're not trashing. We're not saying that Dagobah is a shithole planet. <laughs> <laughs> We're just saying We're that. Just saying that people live there are shithole people. <laughs> no, good golly, they're just lizards and snakes just trying to live just like me and you, Travis. Come on, what do you have? What have you against flying bats in swamps? <laughs> nothing. 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 <laughs> I would, let's see. I would live in Dagobah over. Give me a system. <laughs> Give me a system that I would choose Dagobah. Ak-tru. over. Octu. Octu. An unlivable system. Those yeah. exist. I'll choose Dagobah over an unlivable. Tatooine or Dantooine. Um, Honestly, Dagobah might be Tatooine. Tatooine looks pretty awful. Yeah. Also, um, what was the planet Ray is from? That planet was basically tattoo, tat- Tatooine. Tat- <laughs> Tatooine, but with a two in the middle. Uh, do you mean Jesse? Oh, I think uh, Ron T is saying it's Beal, not Alba. I don't know. We have to make a distinction between the Jessicas here. Uh, oh, Alba don't you dare come for my Alba! <laughs> Don't come for Alba. Alba. Jessica Alba, throughout my entire uh, development, I guess, and she was the hottest woman on the planet Earth. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what else to say about her <laughs> other than that. And I think it's just, tells me she's cool. She just seems like a cool chick too, and I think she has like a, a business that's that's like good. <laughs> I think it's important that we, we measure the merits of actors by their looks. I'm kidding, guys. Okay. K Ferg. I'm here to play devil's advocate. Aristotle is Thank far you. too politically correct, far too beloved and likable. Stop it. That's not my game. Stop no, no, no. it. Jessica uh, Alba, it's Jessica Biel every time. Continue with your show. <laughs> K Ferg, welcome. K Ferg is, I think, incredulously asking. If I indeed liked the movie Battleship. Yes, K. Ferg, I had a good time watching that movie because I was like, you sank my Battleship. If you guys remember those commercials from the 80s, it was really fun and silly. And I used to play Battleship with my brother all the time. And uh, I enjoyed that they turned, they made a device, a plot device that actually worked for coordinate, creating coordinates to drop bombs and uh, to fight the alien enemies. And, and I thought it was a stretch to turn a board game like that into a movie, but they did it, and I was like, I don't hate it. I'm not mad at that. 
Um, let me catch up on some of these. They bring up the illusionist. Will brings up the illusionist with with Beal, saying it is a good movie. It is a good movie. That came out the same year as the Prestige. Yeah, that's funny actually, because I hate the illusionist too. <laughs> and I don't people like it. I know people like it. I hate it. It's just a personal thing, I guess. I and it's not. I didn't even know she was in that. I don't remember that her she being in that. But for whatever reason, anything she touches, I don't like. I guess I don't that's, know. That's fair. But I don't like the Prestige either. I just don't like magicians. Oh, I like the Prestige. I think the Prestige is a wonderful movie. It's Christopher Nolan. Yeah, people love it. I have. Okay, here's the thing. Just. I don't know who's watching. I can't see that information, but I'm assuming people are watching because you're saying people's names, like Kayferg. And I'm just going to tell you, to Kayferg, I have good taste. I just also have peculiar taste sometimes. And there are just certain things I can't get on board with. So I'll acknowledge those are probably good movies that people enjoy. But for me, I can't get past The Magicians. <laughs> what is it about magicians? Are they just creepy? Or do you think that people that go in the line of work? Look, look, I could do sleight of hand. I like magic. I'm pilot. I could fly. I could do tricks like this. Ready? Ooh. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to use the word people don't like, but I'm just going to say magicians are just like pussy ass wizards and sorcerers, right? Like, I love a wi good wizard. I love a good sorcerer. <laughs> I love a warlock. Right. I don't but, need a magician. There's no room for a magician in that suite of yeah. spellcasters. So you, you, know what I mean? you favor actual real sorcery and magic over trickery and illusion. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of our reality. You know what I mean? I want to live in a <laughs> fantasy world where like I'm yeah. into a fantasy magician. You know what I mean? Give me yeah. like a fantasy world where magic exists. And yet also there's this dude who's just like a, tr a magician trying to keep up. You know, that's a cool, that's cool. Like, those guys can do real magic, but I'm out here just trying to like con people into get, paying my rent. You know, <laughs> that's a cool like dynamic. like a magician right. in a world of magic. A magician in a world where magic though no longer exists is just a, a bullshit artist, right? <laughs> there <laughs> are so many. Magicians. It's probably one of my strong opinions. I don't really stand by it. I don't really care that much, but I'm just gonna yeah. let's You're move like, on. I, I'm gonna commit to this anger. <laughs> <laughs> I just say stuff emphatically. Think about it later. I think that's the key to life, actually. Just say stuff as if it's completely thought through and decided everything. Well, the second key is what I said. Think about it later, though. And then yeah. if, if you were wrong, just be like, okay, that thing I said emphatically was kind of stupid. but yeah. <laughs> And I apologize. <laughs> that's... Yeah, yes. Yeah, Go you should on. do that if, if you matter. If Go you're on. like a president and you right. matter, you should apologize. <laughs> yeah, if like if you... YouTube show. I don't really feel the need to apologize. If you're a magician, I have, you're probably a good one. You're probably the one good one. You could probably change my perspective on magic if only <laughs> I gave you the chance. With your trickery and sorcery. I think it's funny when people make apology videos. I, I didn't get to this last week. Someone had asked what I thought of someone's apology video on YouTube, which was like YouTube drama, and I was like, the last thing I'm going to do is YouTube drama, but hey, why not anyway? So, uh, and uh, what was his name? He did this apology video and it was 40 minutes long. And if you need to apologize for 40 minutes, you clearly are trying to explain yourself in a way that means you are not sorry that you want I mean, people. If, you, if you're going to apologize for 40 minutes, you better have fucked up like royally. <laughs> yeah, right? or just say, say the words, I'm sorry, very slowly. Because <laughs> I don't understand what else. You should make a video if it's going to take 40 minutes. Yeah. You should just reflect for a while longer. Yeah. You know? And um, I hate I hate you. It. You hate what YouTube drama? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess it's just reality TV at this point for for folks that are invested. So if if you're coming at it from that perspective, that's fine. But like, if you're really personally and emotionally invested in the world of YouTube drama, I would say uh, check yourself. Yeah, there's you a, there's a ton of YouTube drama where I I just look at the folks and they're like, particularly the apology videos. They're like, why would it take you 40 minutes to say I'm sorry? I hurt you. I won't do that again. That's a, that's an apology. <laughs> like an apology. Yeah, I think this is actually a topic for maybe a different conversation because I actually have, yeah. I, I do have some thoughts and feelings on this, but Indeed. I will say if I can remember what I was about to say that, um, I forget. 
Sh- uh, no worries. Ron Perti does remind me. It was Shane Dawson. Shane Dawson every year comes out with an apology video, which means he's clearly not thinking about what the hell he's doing if he has to keep apologizing for it. So. I do remember, though. I do think it's interesting as the YouTube space becomes more and more um, of a major player kind of in the entertainment industry and um, what we consume. We're going to have to really figure out how we want to blur these lines between like reality and entertainment. Because people are, are have this expectation that like if you're on YouTube, you are just being yourself, and that like right. you are you time every day. This isn't Actually, who you are all the time. You you're, always you're walk good. around. You, you always walk around with headphones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, I do that. I'm a, I'm a douchebag. But uh, <laughs> but but I mean, I don't like people get so mad about people are getting upset with Shane. I don't know too many of the specifics. I know he has made some videos in his past that are uncouth. I get that, but also. I don't know. I have no no. I have no uh, opinion on the matter. Right. I don't know the facts. All I know is, if we're going to expect people to present themselves to us as entertainers moving forward, we also have to have some uh, some decency in dealing with their mistakes and right. their. Uh, you know what I mean? Like we can't we can't put everybody up on a pedestal and then strike them down the minute they fuck up. You know, it's not there, cool. Pete. There's a, there's an interesting interesting conversation in there about cancel culture because I think. If someone is broadcasting their life 24-7 and then they say they make a mistake, maybe things should be more contextualized and then they should be able to... Um, I don't want people explaining away their behavior. I want them to apologize. That's, I think, fundamentally the problem. If they do I something... cancel culture. Yeah, cancel culture, well, okay. I think, needs to... There it's are like, people that deserve to be canceled. Yeah. But there aren't nearly as many people who deserve to be canceled as apparently are being canceled. I'm not even sure if this whole cancel thing is real. I think it's kind of bullshit. I mean, you can't truly cancel someone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel it. Uh, I feel it's kind of ironic that people who want tolerance are intolerant. It, there's a weird double-edged sword there. I, I also like, think there is. there needs to be some movement away from this I, new idea of cancel culture. It's, it's kind of like bullying, I think, to some extent, where yeah. they... I, I don't know. I remember hearing a message. I think it was on bullying where, like, you know, you can only be... It's not quite bullying, but like you can only be bullied as much as you allow people to bully you, kind of. You can only be canceled so far in as you allow people to cancel you, especially in this day and age. Like, right. Yeah, I think there's. You have a right to speak your mind and to uh, express yourself. Whether people want to spend money for you to do that or not is a different conversation, but you know. Indeed. Go ahead. I, no, I, I was just thinking of um, the director for Guardians of the Galaxy, what like being penalized for something he did ten years ago, and then being fired and then rehired once the dust settles. I Dude, also, that. I mean, for us personally, um, as people who like to try and be funny, sometimes too, it's like people gotta start realizing that jokes are jokes, man, and like you are not defined by your sense of humor. You know what right. I mean? Like, my values and ideals are not defined by the horrible thing. I'm super comfortable being like, I know what I believe in and who I am and how I treat people day to day. Right. And I know, like, what I find funny and what um, what entertains me, what humors me. And they're sometimes in conflict, but only in the sense that someone might take it the wrong way. Not in the sense that, like, I can say whatever the hell I want. I know how I'm going to treat somebody when I see them. You know? Like, I know how I treat people. Yeah, and no, I think I, it's... I think it's contextual too. If you're on a stage with a microphone or if you're trying to make an attempt at humor, there's a line that you try to, you, there's, you want to be provocative and evocative with humor a lot of times because that's what evokes laughter. And sometimes people mess up in that context. But I think that there, there yeah. should be a little bit more forgiveness because I think comedians don't try to like necessarily socially change they just want you to laugh at a joke <laughs> there should be forgiveness i think when when someone is clearly deserving of it right there are people such as you know let's we don't have to get into politics but there are people who clearly deserve to be canceled in a sense because, can you cancel a president uh, man we tried it didn't work but yeah. uh, we're gonna try again in a few months um Indeed. it better work that time yeah but you know vote. i mean there i think there are people that i think whose values really are detrimental to uh, society, to people getting along, to people, you know, living freely and happily and healthily. 
canceled. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's maybe a little hypocritical, but I'm kind of cool with it. You know, whatever. I think when when that's people's true point. colors come through, and I say true colors as a pun because I do not like Cindy Lauper, and if anybody's been watching the show, they know why I don't like Cindy Lauper because <laughs> of. And if you haven't uh, heard that story, I'll tell it on another show. But Cindy Lauper, uh, she she's, she's a little bit racist. But anyway, I'll, I'm gonna mention Tatiana. Welcome to the show. Tatiana says The Prestige is one of her favorite movies ever. I I'm sorry. <laughs> I love that movie, The Prestige. I love the book. The book's pretty cool. It diverges from the movie about two thirds in, but <clears throat> I liked. Christopher Nolan's approach of the dualities. There's so many dualities in that in that movie that I think are uh, just really cool filmic um, ideas that he themes that he maintains censured. Um, Shane literally got canceled yeah. though. He, YouTube demonetized him, which is true. Yeah. Uh, though yeah, Shane fuck censorship. I'm not. I'm not into that. Yeah, that's a good shirt to have. F censorship. <laughs> but yeah. mine would have like an asterisk. <laughs> There's a over the, yeah. yeah. So clever. <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw it in the shop. Buy Aristotle's merch when he has it. <laughs> do you have merch? You don't have merch yet. I do, do have merch. merch. Do you? I, okay. I, I got some merch, guys. You can check out. There's a link down below. If you guys want to follow Travis also, he's on Instagram. You got at Travis Thompson Film. Um, and just, you know, hang out, be part of the – doing some housekeeping here and uh, catching up on comments. Um, Emma says, I think people are defined very much by their sense of humor. That shows a lot about who you are. I think I, I can, uh, I think, I think, yes. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. And also I think that having a sense of humor at all is a very (laughs) important thing to to me. It's a valuable. If you don't have one, get one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. it can be your own it can be weird it doesn't matter just get one there are people in this world if you are just like hey why the chicken cross the road to get to the other side and they're like why would you say that i am so offended what you yeah. are you do you do not like chickens like they get so angry about jokes and i and i that hurts me deeply if that whenever that hey, happens. don't talk about beatiness ever again <laughs> you've learned about, a lesson about BT, i'm not going to mention my bts yeah. mistake don't ever talk about them again. Yeah. Let's see. Um, James Gunn, it was intolerant people using the idea of cancel culture to silence his critiques of them. This is Will speaking. Uh, that's true. Yeah, there, there were, James Gunn was a, that was a frame job. They, there were people who were looking specifically, oh, who, indeed. they were like legitimate, these people were anti-cancel culture. So they decided to, assassinate James Gunn using cancel culture politics, um, which it's just not the same when you have two tweets from 2009 that were failed attempts at humor versus a president, say, who readily admits to assaulting women. And that's where I think we as a society are, I think we're getting, I mean, this is all new. I think we're getting used to it. We, we just, we are, we have to be the wall, I guess, the defense of people, you know, we have to come to each other's a, I guess when like, you know, when we're being thrown under the bus, everything's so political these days. You know, we just have to stand up for each other, apologize, you know, when we when we should, and uh, just do our best to be decent people, right? I it ain't that argue hard. That. I can't argue that with hard. that. No, it's not hard. You know? Listen, we were talking about Jesus on Monday with Jake. I'm not a big Jesus guy. I'm not a Jesus freak. I don't read the, the. I mean, I read parts of the Bible as a kid. I got kicked out of Sunday school. This is. Well known on this channel. Though Jesus said, hey, d- just don't be a dick. I mean, if you don't want to be treated like a jerk, don't be a jerk to someone else. To me, yeah, it's as simple as that. It's a very simple lesson. And no one should have an issue with your religious preferences or anything. We, right. I think some of us have issues with certain institutions that have made uh, questionable choices and continue to sometimes. But I think everybody has the right to, uh, to believe what they want. Uh, move through this world in the way that they want as long as they're not hurting other people right while they do it and that's what i love about this country in particular because that's like the whole idea of this country yet a lot of people a friend of mine oliver points out that it it's just becoming so hard-lined in this country that the left values loves america for the idea of democracy and the right loves America for the idea of capitalism. So there's like this divergence. Like there's yeah. a sweet spot in the middle where we can all agree, 
but it just seems that like the hard right wants just all capitalism all day to, at the, uh, the expense of democracy and sort of vice versa. I mean, you can kind of also flip that coin and say, well, Democrats, they want to just give handouts all day. And it's 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 not quite the same. Yeah, And that's the danger with, you know, looking at everything from a political lens like we seem to be doing these days is that, like, you know, politics have their own motives. I mean, politics, speaking of games, we want to take back to games. Yeah. Politics are the, the political landscape of any given country is just a giant game, basically, that a lot of mm -hmm. people are playing uh, that we don't have to take part in, thankfully, because yeah. we're not politicians. Right. So don't think about everything like it's a game, like it's win-lose, like it's one or the other, right? Like, just be nice, be a good person, be proud of yourself. If you can stand by your actions and your thoughts and your, not even your thoughts, fuck your thoughts. Your thoughts are, you can't control, but stand by the way you speak, the way you treat people, the way you move through the world. And that's good. It doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, don't worry about it. I don't know. Indeed. I, I think that that's true. It's, it's all a game. There's so many people like Ben Shapiro who to me just reminds me of like the eighth grade captain of the debate team. <laughs> like, it's just like, okay, this dude can literally argue anything, no, right. both sides of anything all day. And that's, he only, the only merit he has is he is a skilled tactical arguer. He has no fundamental moral foundation that I think is, is respectable at, to any yeah. extent of the imagination. Let me, let me and just, as, yeah, go, go ahead. No, go. Uh, I'm going to read some comments here. Eva says, but I also think there are times she was talking about sense of humor and how it does actually help define a person. But I also think there are times where people who, for instance, don't understand the comedy being presented, i.e. satire or, or irony, and then can be targeted in an unfair way. That's true. Yeah. But that, I think, is also being a, being a dick. You don't want to be <laughs> a, a dick. Some people think when you're being sarcastic that you are making fun of them. Sometimes, sometimes they'll they'll think that you are the target of the humor when it's. I've noticed this in life, and I try to skillfully navigate this. But sometimes, you will say something facetious or sarcastic, and someone will be like, "What? What? They they, they just their sarcas their sarcasm detector is not highly functional." Right, and, that, I mean, and that's I think that's a big part of having a sense of humor. It's two ends, yeah. right? On one end, it's learning to be funny in a way that hurts people minimally, right? Hopefully not at all. Like, and yeah, yeah. you start to, look to get a sense of like, all right, I'm pushing a little too hard on this person, whatever, let's back off, let's flip the script, whatever. Yeah. And as the audience, you have to be willing to set yourself aside on occasion and be like, all right, that hurt my feelings, but he's not specifically targeting me, it's okay, you know, or yeah. she, whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever, it's all. I mean, I've been, the, I've been to comedy clubs okay. and stuff and I'm an easy target in the audience so Sorry, like that college, you know what you do? You laugh it off i laugh you, it off i didn't think it was particularly funny when i was being uh made fun of because <laughs> I, I, was, I was i was at the comedy store and i was just wearing some some ripped up jeans because i was trying to look cute or whatever you know i was wearing some ripped up jeans it was late we were like not many people left in the room so the guy you know he decided to make fun of my jeans <laughs> i didn't think it was that funny because i don't think it's a very funny topic but because <laughs> you know i like I mean? my jeans my yeah, I mean, I don't, think, I don't think it's that funny, but, <laughs> and I don't think the rest of the audience thought it was that funny because no one was laughing too hard, but you know what, I laughed anyway. I kind of pretended to laugh a little bit because I was like, yeah. oh, you know, we'll play along. Yeah, I want to help play along. him be funny. Let's help him do his job. Right. And sometimes, though, there are people who got canceled, uh, just going back a little bit, to the dude that got canceled on SNL before he started last season. His, I actually went back and listened to what he was saying. He's like, well, I was just trying to be funny. I was just trying to be funny. I actually listened to it. He, he was just using like yeah. racial it's pejorative not, terms. It's, not, it's also, it wasn't funny at all. No, it was like, it doesn't even sound like you're trying to be funny. You're just no. using racial racist terms. That's yeah. all it sounds just like you're doing. Just being, just using expletives and, and like epithets is not funny in and of itself. No, you, know? you can't be like. MF this and MF that and kiss my big black stuff. That's uh, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me catch up on the, some of these comments here. Condi Lane says, uh, duh, hey, duh. If you do anything wrong in life, duh, and I find out about it, <laughs> I'm going to try and take everything away from you. And I don't care if, what I find out. Could be today, tomorrow, 15, 20 years from now. If I find out, you're effing duh finished. Yes, that's <laughs> true. That's true. That is the mentality. It's all in quotes, by the way. She was... Uh, she was performing the part of a canceller in cancel yeah. culture, which is 
if you needed that to be explained to you, you are part of the problem. <laughs> exactly. If someone's like, wait, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't get it. Will says, I honestly wasn't a fan of the man show and didn't get why ABC gave, uh, you're talking about Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, I'll credit it, it to his strong hosting and comedy central roasts and having connections. Why, why ABC sort of gave him, gave Jimmy Kimmel a show after he did the man show. Will, I'm there with you. I didn't quite understand the man show. I was like, they're just drinking beer a lot. And there's like women jumping on trampolines. And I was a kid and I was like, I don't get why this is associated with being a man. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I was a, a weird kid. But uh, did you ever watch The Man Show? I was super young when that was on. But I remember as a very young man thinking it was like super cool and funny. <laughs> right? Because like I was very young. So I was like, oh, this is cool. This is cool. This is funny. I you know what? don't remember anything about the show now as an adult. But uh... I remember Jimmy Kimmel being on Win Ben Stein's Money, which is what I thought was cool. Because I was like, this is a cool show. Because Ben Stein, despite being a Republican, and I disagree with his politics and whatnot. And he worked for Nixon. I'm like, this guy is a genius. He has a lot of information in his head. And I just found that show funny. Um, yeah. Let's see. Ron Perti says, society hasn't gotten soft. Social media has given everyone a voice. When not everyone needs a voice. Absolutely. Local minority. That's the internet dynamic. For Twitter especially, the angriest people are the ones who are motivated to say a thing. And they are probably the fewest out of, out of they're the vocal minority. I, should I, say. Am, I am very hopeful that that will change over time, though. And this, we're all so new as a society to, to social yeah. media and, and the internet and all of this that, like, I think we're going through that reckoning right now where we're realizing like, oh, this isn't how we want to behave online. Like it's still a public space. And, you know, like I think, well, you know, 10 years from now, I, I hope it's a very different landscape. You know, I think I think it will be. I think we'll sort of we are in the infancy of all of this all, and trying oh. to figure it out. And then we're all just going to plug our brains in and and kind of actually know each other's intentions all like automatically at some point. Enter the uh, Matrix, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's we're getting there we're pretty close um you don't have to believe in a abrahamic religion to find utility in the wisdom that is divulged yes will i that's that's very we were talking about philosophation philosophy earlier <laughs> and uh philosophizing. philosophizing and so much valuable philosophy is found in the established religions and lots of philosophers throughout the centuries you know i tend to be a jean paul sartre fan and a Nietzsche fan, which are, they're kind of absurdist and existentialist types of philosophies where you just kind of deal with reality as it is and accept it for its weird absurdity. Um, yeah, I'm totally not anti-religion in the, in the sense that I think every human is going to inevitably have their own sense of a personal religion that they subscribe to, whatever that means to you. I, uh, I am just generally fearful of uh, institutions at lar and large groups of people yeah. organized in any structure. I think anytime a bunch of people get together and just decide they're going to do whatever, they're going to do the same thing together <laughs> without thinking it through too much on an individual level, I get scared. The, you I, don't, know, uh, I don't like that. The, my favorite joke, one of my favorite jokes is, uh, what's the difference between a religion and a cult? In a cult, there's someone all the way up at the top who knows it's all bullshit in a religion that guy is dead right yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's true um it, I mean, there is some truth to it certainly and let's here let me scroll down here there's lots of activity today i'm enjoying it guys thank you so much for joining me and travis if you want to follow travis you the travis thompson film on instagram you guys are awesome for supporting and watching every day we, we've we've created a nice environment where we can kind of share these ideas and, I, and i'm enjoying the heck out of it this is yeah this is fun thanks for having me on yeah thank you so much for doing this this is this is real fun i uh like and I'd love to have you back. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna continue talking. Obviously, but I just I'd like I'd like you to be a familiar friend to the show, and uh, contribute your I'm ideas. I'm down. Uh, let's we'll see. see if your audience agrees. <laughs> Kick him out. Let's see. Condi says I took a a canceler quote from Dave Chappelle. I don't uh, I don't use the F word. Fair enough, Condi. I try. I used the F word earlier. Uh, I apologize for that. 
Actually, I don't. I'm sorry. I did because I. <laughs> it's just my own little standard. I'd, I'd prefer to Listen, have like. I know Aristotle in real life. Yeah. Spoiler. I <laughs> he uses the F word. I do. Uh, let's see. Will. Uh, big hair and glasses. Mug, by the way. It's Thank you. Distraction. This is a. This is my backup mug. My old mug broke actually, and I was very sad about it. Let's t- get back to some games. Irony and wait, Eva says irony and satire, not sarcasm. Yes, I, I, I'm losing the context here. <laughs> There's a lot of discussion going on in the thread, which is awesome. You're probably right. Whatever, whatever yes. you're talking. Eva is point. very wise. Eva is a is a Sounds friend of the show, and she's very wise on all this. Stuff. So much for board game movies, but consider how many movies and stories are literally based on chess. Yeah, chess is an interesting. That's like one of the oldest games, chess and go. The uh, the Chinese game Go. They are Chess very. Is, uh, the, these are games yeah. that are foundational. They're, they're foundational. They're easy to learn, pretty quickly, uh, but so difficult and so strategic. Easy to, to learn, difficult to master. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's that's really what you're looking for in game design at a, at any level. You know, you don't want to be so obtuse that your audience can't uh, enter the the game and can't figure out how to to navigate it but it needs to be complex enough that you can spend i mean if 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 you really want to make a lasting impact it needs to be complex enough that you can play this game a game for years and still be discovering i think you know you could play chess for a lifetime and still be discovering um discovering new strategies or new uh new things to some extent i love that about chess because you can I forget there's only a few dozen moves you can do first and then the yeah. second move or the sec by the second or third move in a chess game there are like hundreds of thousands of combinations like just looking at the game itself it's hard to comprehend that but as you move each piece and get further and further into the game you are creating almost a unique game every single time you play chess. Just like a deck of cards, you could shuffle a yeah. deck of cards your entire life and never get the same deck order. Yeah, and the more I'm kind of learning about game design and just the more I'm becoming invested in like the world of tabletop gaming, it really the, it's such a fascinating creative space because everything is foundational or at, not everything is built on something foundational pretty much to some degree. Like. The lineage of chess extends through mm, games, will extend through gaming forever to some degree, right? Like just this concept of movement, uh, symmetry, symmetry between your opponent, um, the 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 notion of the grid, um, of asymmetry between your own pieces, where different units have different abilities fundamentally. Um, they're just like I mean, these are all just really fundamental, basic premises that can be manipulated in games in a variety of ways, but it's just like, it's so cool to be able to look back and see like, all right, chess, these mechanics basically that chess is dealing with can be seen in games throughout history and can continue to be kind of utilized and and manipulated. And a lot of games you're playing these days are really just chess 3.0 or 4.0. It's it's chess with extra mechanics kind of built around it or, you know, like a, like most like a miniatures war game is in a lot of ways just chess with the caveat that you get to pick your pieces right like how much does chess change when you get to show up to your chess tournament with how many pieces are there on a chess board on each side maybe 20 or maybe 20 let's just say there's 20 let's say there's 10 pawns and 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 10 other pieces in the back line for sake of argument how different is chess when when you're when you show up to the table with your opponent you can have tw- say you can choose 20 pawns you could have 19 pawns and a queen you could have you know what and your opponent might come with six rooks and and, and then there's you know that's how metas develop where, where i don't know i'm getting ahead of myself but i i love yeah i love all the thinking about all that is so cool <laughs> there, there's like, so many possibilities it's it's kind of insane like just like a slight adjustment of any type of of um ability that each piece has will affect the entire playing style of the game which is which is yeah it's 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 it really is a creative outlet is is the way i'm starting to think about gaming is in and of itself creative playing a game is the way you play the way you choose to make your moves is a version of creative problem solving creative thinking creative expression even you know like 
different people will play things in different ways based on their personality. How aggressive are you? How, you know, I mean, it's, it's really, really an interesting um, world. My brother has like the best strat. I'm trying to, there's a bunch of bots that just crashed my, <laughs> my Twitch. I don't know how to like, I'm trying to uh, get rid of all of them. They keep asking people if they want to be, become famous. Oh, I know. <laughs> Uh, Want to become famous? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me We're click on this. Famous. Yeah. Let me just click on this to... link. Exactly. You know what? I think this guy's got something. About, I, I don't know. The way that they keep asking the question, you want to become famous, I think there's something to it. <laughs> Maybe You're I should follow this link. You are famous, Aristotle. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't. I can't quite see that because I framed it oh, out, no. but. I know. It's okay. I can move it over and show people part of it. Yeah, there it is. Um, sorry, guys, in Twitch that are being hassled by these weird bots. I've been, I blocked as many as I could. Hopefully, you don't see them anymore. Um, yeah, they're going to keep popping up, I guess. I received 100 messages today. Obviously, like 50 of them were from bots. Sorry about that interruption. I wanted to talk a little bit about... Uh, chess also veronica brings this up which is amazing this is very true my sister veronica and you guys on instagram if you want to continue watching go the game clue it was a board game and now and then it was an awesome movie which was hilarious i don't awesome. know if you've ever yeah have you seen One it of my favorite actress yeah it's oh, a, i'm a big tim i'm a big rocky horror picture show fan like that's pretty awesome. big and yeah. obviously they're obsessive fans. I'm not. I'm not like quite at that level, but I do love Rocky Horror. And I've been to my my share of uh, midnight shows, and so Tim Curry is a uh, has a special place in my heart and crotch. <laughs> Tim Curry is amazing, and and he's Pennywise also. Face. Yeah, he Tim is. Curry. Just yeah. think of that role that he played he as um. What's his? He's not Rocky Horror, but he plays who? He plays uh. He plays uh. Frankenfurter. Frankenfurter. Just yeah. think about that role that he decided to take on and own and destroy and make oh, iconic that role. in the 70s. It's kind of amazing. And he's somehow, like, I'm a mostly heterosexual man, but he is just, like, so sexy in that movie. And, like, I don't know, man. Tim Curry did. He was a he was, he, legend. That's all I can say. Speech he is great. I, I just, I was very, um, uh, I was surprised to learn that he was still, still alive. I thought he got sick and died, but thankfully I he's still. I think he's dead. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so great you said that because I was about to allude to the fact that I think he's dead. I always have to ask my girlfriend, like, is he dead? Or, and, no. But he did have um, like some a medical issue. I think a stroke. Yeah. Yes, he had a, he's got a serious him. medical issue, but yeah, he, he's no longer performing. But that guy is yeah. a gift, even in Home Alone 2. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, so good yeah. in Every, that. Dude, everything he's in, everything he's in, he's gold. He's yeah. gold. Uh, so Instagram has ended. Angie brings up, yes, he did have a stoke. I think you mean stroke. Yes. But he did have, <laughs> he he did have a... He was stoked to have a stroke, though. He was... <laughs> no. Um, I, I feel so sad because he's one of the most... He's like a consummate performer. He's a very... Uh, his energy is just so yeah. infectious, and he's like a, he's one of those like once in a lifetime kind of yes, or, you know, very few left. I think you know I would put him up there with like Bowie and and some of those kind of performers who really just kind of um, really just leave a mark and extend beyond their like primary form of entertainment, their primary medium. You know, um, yeah, he was he was a gift for sure. He is yeah. he is he's, he's not dead yet. He's, I'm we, sorry. We could, we could still learn from Tim Curry. The thing I love about him is he can just, his face, you can read every emotion on his face and he barely has to move. <laughs> that yeah. is one of the most amazing things about him. Um, yeah, his, Veronica's back in the chat. Incredible, incredible voice. I might have to give power of uh, moderation to one of our loyal fans here to make sure that, somebody, like if I'm not paying attention and the bots start storming the room. But yeah, uh, I think, I think I got. Bot army. I should. Bot army to fight, just like, just like Ultron. Uh, mm -hmm. but Clue, <laughs> Clue is one of the, my favorite movies, and I remember as a kid, watching that. And there are three different endings to that movie, which apparently, when the movie was released in theaters, it depended on which showing you went to. That's so on, cool. On which ending you saw. 
So when they show it on TV, they show all three endings consecutively. But if you saw it at a a different theater than your friend, you saw different endings. That's That's awesome. Yeah. That is a great... They should do something like that again, but I think people might think it's a gimmick to get them to pay more than once. I mean, it is a gimmick. You know, it's, it's... I think it's kind of analogous to uh, like the Black Mirror. I didn't watch it, but the Netflix kind of like choose your own adventure type of uh, Black Mirror. Movie yeah, yeah, did. yeah. It's it's a similar vein, you know. That was the technology they had at that. Well, I mean, I think there was some technology people did some. Yeah, Bandersnatch. Yeah, but uh, I think that's kind of like an, a similar gimmick. It's a much more palatable version of that gimmick. It's. It's you know you don't know it you don't know when you're watching the movie that there's other endings so it's kind of cool to be able to like run into your friend back in that time at least when before the internet ruined everything it would have yeah. been cool I imagine to be like wait you saw a different ending than me what the <laughs> that's pretty sweet I I think it's pretty amazing I what did you think of Bandersnatch did you play Bandersnatch I didn't did you play. watch play I did should play. I guess I really really don't like the idea of behind it um just personally I. That's not when I when I go to watch a, a film or a TV show, I want to see the creator's perspective. I want to see yeah. what they're the story they're telling me. I don't want to tell my own story. Yeah. That's I have other mediums for that, such as gaming. Yeah. Uh, right. So for me, it's I'm not particularly interested in it, but I should give it a give it a go just as an experiment, I guess. I I thought it was pretty cool, and I thought that it was done. Interestingly, I thought it was like a really good first attempt at storytelling in that way. And I don't know if Netflix has any other interactive medium uh, movies, but that one, I remember I played it a couple nights in a row, played it, watched it. I don't know what you would call it. I, I interacted with yeah. that that thing a few nights in a row just to kind of go down different pathways. And they, they get super ridiculous They'll just be like, jump out the window. And you're like, okay. <laughs> you just right. jump out the and then the show ends. And then it starts back. It's funny that it's interesting you bring up the play versus watch thing because it is actually, I think, more similar to playing a video game that is, it's gra- the graphics are just live action filmed behaviors and actors, right? But it's more, yeah. you know, I, I don't play a ton of video games, but I know there are a lot of like um, kind of storytelling narrative driven video games that have become more popular over the last several years where, um, they're much more about the decisions that you make in the story than the actual mechanics of like moving and jumping and shooting or whatever. Um, and it's, it's, it's very much similar to that. Uh, and that is interesting. I, I could see as VR becomes more um, accessible, I could see stories like that or a medium like that being really cool in like fully physically. Yeah. Perhaps even that you can play some role in and have some actual um, interaction with the physical space. That'd be tough, but it'd be really cool if they could, like, yeah. I th- I think that's... Even without the physical connection, it's cool. Uh, Being able to VR, look around. The, I love VR for that effect, that you can kind of... I can go, I could be in Paris, and I could look around at the Eiffel Tower. But I think the storytelling element of VR... It, I feel like VR has had many false starts for the last... Since Nintendo had a VR headset back in the day. Like, you put your face... 20, right. 30 years ago. And um, I think that the challenge with VAR and its many false starts has been, how do we tell a story this way? And a lot of times now they're trying to use audio to try to guide you through the story. So if you hear something fall behind you, you, you it's like a 3D audio space. You can kind of turn your head and then follow that. But then you're sort of provoked to go down the story, how it's totally. going to unfold anyway. But. Yeah, I think I, I, I think gaming is actually, as we move into that future, going to become, I, I think I mentioned this to you privately, but I think it is going to become a much more um, respected kind of, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, practice, I guess. Um, and like knowledge of game design is going to be more respected because I think as we kind of lean into those forms of stel- storytelling, you really are designing a game at that point, right? Like you're no longer presenting a film you are presenting a game and uh, and in that sense almost more of a video game where you need audio cues to to direct your player so that they follow the right path um and and figuring out 
kind of blending storytelling and design elements from gaming in a way that creates like a smooth narrative structure that's also interactive, that's also rewarding, um, that's also tactical to some degree, right? I think if that form of storytelling becomes more common, it's going to be boring if, and that's my problem with Bandersnatch, right? To me, it's not exciting because I can't, there's no real winning or losing. There's no real, like, I don't really have a lot of, um, you just got to get to the end agency. of the movie. I don't, yeah. Really, yeah, I don't have agency in my decision-making. It's not like, all right, if I make the right decisions, I can like have a, you know, I can have, I can feel good about myself. I can feel that like endorphin rush that like, all right, I made intelligent decisions. Um, right. That, that element is lacking. But I think if you can really, if, if there were, if we're able to blend all of those elements together into an interesting narrative with strong characters that we can navigate through organically and feel rewarded for our part in the story, that seems like it could be pretty cool. I mean, and, it, it, and it's, it's, it's not that different than what video games are. Some video games are attempting to do yeah. successfully right now. I, and I see what you're saying about having agency in the game. I think Bandersnatch in particular feels like I don't want to make the wrong move instead of you're going you're going okay which is the wrong move so i can avoid doing the wrong move which is negative yeah cuz that's not that's not how we watch movies right i don't watch a movie saying like i hope this is what happens and if this doesn't happen i'm going to be upset we watch movies cuz we don't want to know what's going to happen right like i want yeah. to be surprised like i want yeah. to i want to have my expectations subverted in a way that is rewarding and 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 impactful um that's a little different than what you want out of a game um you don't want, you want, you, in a game environment, you want to feel that agency. You want to feel like your decisions matter, your choices matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, and in a movie, that's, I, I don't know how that's going to, how that blends together. Maybe I'll have to try Banner Snatch to see if it does, but I, my gut is telling me that there's, something's missing in that uh, equation at the moment. Uh, Travis, there's some questions for you here. Uh, is Travis playing Ghosts of uh, Tsushima? Uh, what are you playing right now? Uh, Angie and Eva are interested um no but i've seen um some people live streaming it uh this dude bruce green that i used to like on funhouse um is streaming it i've been meaning to watch that i play a lot more tabletop gaming games than the video games um so right now i'm playing i'm building a lot of like warhammer 40k models uh i'm playing like a marvel miniatures game i play a lot of magic the gathering uh i play this really cool game that i think you would actually like called kingdom death monster that's like this camp, really dark, narrative-driven campaign game uh, where you basically like create a settlement, and lead these survivors through basically hell, and have to fight all these. It's really cool. It's it's very, um, yeah. I'm I'm really right now interested in, in games that are just different than your average kind of experience. That are really trying to bend the boundaries of like what we think you can accomplish on a yeah. table. That's what's really cool to me. It's like. We have all these with video games now. We have obviously movies forever. Like we have these experiences that I think most of us, including myself, imagine you wouldn't be able to replicate on a tabletop with just pieces of plastic and cardboard and paper and pen. And um, I guess that's the lesson that D and D taught us in like the '80s, right? Is that like yeah. if if you're creative and intelligent and and can immerse your audience in the world, it's like reading a book. It's almost it's actually more powerful when it's when things are happening in your imagination and and like just uh, represented thematically in physical space, I think, than just watching something happen or interacting with something. Like, yeah. when, when, when you have that control over how you see it and how you process. Like an open world, like Will is bringing up like open world uh, type of yeah. environment. Yeah. yeah, totally. Like, it's, it, it, does, it does kind of make, it makes the experience more memorable, more exciting, more personal. That's really the thing. And that's where the storytelling comes. It's more personal. It's like, D and D is special because it's your character, it's your it's your campaign, it's your world. I'm not the biggest D and D fan, but I totally understand the. Uh, They're the asking appeal. about D and D and D also. Yeah. Are you are you playing? Yeah. So I have I, I'm going to attempt to GM at some point soon, be the game master, like run my own game. I think I'll enjoy that more because that will be more of the storyteller role, and like I'll be able to kind of uh, have some fun narratively. I think in that role as a player, I am start. I have played several times and done a couple campaigns it's it's not my favorite game to play as like a party member um yeah. especially because of the game, scantrons and the number two pencils and, and the paper 
What I love about it is the socialization. To me, it's more like it's like it's like going to a like a costume party. That's what's fun about it. When I can go to my friend's house and we can all just like play these weird, silly characters, and I can make them laugh and character, and we can have some fun. That I love about D and D. That's cool. I don't see D and D as much as a game, in the sense that like I'm really drawn to like uh, from a game perspective. I think it's a super fun social event though. And uh, yeah, it's kind and of I, like, I do that about D and D. Yeah, like LARPing. It's a bit of a LARP. Yeah, yeah, and the gaming like industry, I think, still has so much room to grow and so much more like um, segregation of genre to like move into. Where like, because right now when we talk about like board games, if you talk to ten different people, they're gonna have ten different ideas of what you mean by a board game. Like some people will think Monopoly, Risk. Some people will think chess and cart and poker, whatever. And then I or people who are more invested might think of totally different games that other people have never heard of, right? But I think as it becomes more popular, hopefully, and more commonplace, we're going to see more of a, of a breakdown where we can discuss, you know, um, social games, uh, casual games, hardcore games. I mean, that already happens, but I think as it will become more mainstream, I think it'll be easier to talk about, hopefully easier to have these discussions and, uh, yeah, know what you're, what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm getting lost. No, it's fair. Fair enough. Um, thank you guys for jumping over to the YouTube because of the obnoxious bots on Twitch. I didn't realize that was a issue I had to deal with. Now you learn something new every day about streaming, which I'm trying to educate myself about. Uh, hopefully next week, guys. Uh, I still, I still got to talk to Greg, but uh, I want to have Greg on one of these days because a week from Sunday night, we are going to watch a movie on Mediocre Films. So if you're watching on Twitch, sign up to Mediocre Films. I'm going to be talking with Greg on that show. And we're going to be watching uh, Beastmaster 2. In case you cool. guys have never seen a Beastmaster movie, there will be ferrets, I promise. Uh, Angie says, I don't know if I asked this, but did anyone have a physical board game, the physical board game Jumanji? It was one of the regrets that she never got it for Christmas. Uh, and Eva says, there... It was a really cool board game cafe in Copenhagen that she loved and went to go nerd out with some nerds. But did, does anybody have, have you ever played the actual board game Jumanji? We have, it's, so it was a movie first. Or a book yeah, first. yeah, definitely movie first. Um, yeah, I don't know much about it. I know you can get a version of a Jumanji game on Amazon right now, but it doesn't, I don't know if it's just a re release of that original game or if it's different. But like I said, yeah, it looks very. Um, very much like a, a kid's kind of family game, kind of more like a shoots and ladders type of vibe. Um, yeah, so interesting. Maybe w one day, I'm sure if I ever have kids, my gaming taste will have to change dramatically. But right now, I try and stick to the, the games I couldn't play when I was a kid. You know right. what I mean? Shoots and I remember ladders. being young and like being at the card shop, a game shop, and seeing people play like Warhammer. Um, with like their little toy models and, and like these big huh. battlefields. And I just remember thinking it was the coolest thing ever. And it was so inaccessible at that age because it was kind of expensive. It was, you had to learn how, you had to know how to glue models together and paint them. And it was That's way cool. out of my, out of, but so now as an adult, I'm finally trying to like get into those hobbies that, well, now I, I am into them now, I guess. And, uh, really exploring that space right now. The, I remember the scratches. There are strategy games I really liked, like Risk, which is a kind of a, it looks kind of boring because there's just these little pieces on a map of the world. It looks like we're playing Geography, but it was actually pretty fun to be, uh, to do world domination and they are turning Risk into a movie. Oh yeah? Yeah, no, because... Risk was one of my favorite games growing up for sure. Um, yeah. I've, I've since moved, now I think what I've heard that genre refer to mostly in what I call, they're called Dudes on a Map games. <laughs> where like putting dudes so i have one that's really awesome uh called cthulhu wars which is basically take risk and then remove all the human armies and instead each player plays as like um one of hp lovecraft's elder gods and oh, your right. job is to actually destroy the earth you're trying to be the first elder god to destroy the earth so you and do they all have your, like, particular qualities like cthulhu yeah. you can't look at cthulhu or something or <laughs> yeah, there's all. Yeah, it's a, it's very asymmetrical. The guy who designs them is his name's Sandy Peterson, and he uh, he used to work in the video game industry, but he's always been um, mostly professionally invested in like um, balancing factions in games. So like yeah. he worked on Age of Empires, and he had to balance France and Britain and America, make sure they were all interesting and unique, but also like balanced in a gameplay setting. So he now designs games that are just like 
really incredibly asymmetrical in a way that's so cool where each faction plays totally different um and and yet they're balanced and able to compete um fairly and yeah it's an awesome game yeah he plays cthulhu and he has his suite of abilities and and different monsters he can summon and raise and different wind conditions and it's that's an awesome game um, that's cool. War of the Ring is also like a dude on the map game, basically that I was talking about earlier. So that's basically Risk, but Lord of the Rings, right? And uh, and and super narratively driven in a way that's so cool. Like I've only played it once so far, but it's so cool because as you're playing, you're like, I know how this scene plays out in the books, but I get to play it out my own way. I can I can select my fellowship a little differently. You know, I can send different party members to different parts of the map. I can you know look for different allies. I can ally with the elves or the dwarves or, you know, it's, it's just really cool as a fan. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting off no, track, but yeah, no, <laughs> dudes on a map games are cool. Risk is awesome. Dudes on, dudes on a map. I am painting your blue pants silver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's some reminiscing and uh, some nostalgia going on. Blowing KB up. KB toys. KB toys. KB toys, toys was my us. source for wrestling action figures. <laughs> I used to always love checking out what wrestling action figures they had in stock. It's funny. Toys I had, us, obviously. I had the WW when it was WWF. I had those big giant rubber uh, wrestling figures as a kid, uh, which they yeah. had since reduced in size because the the giant ones were like costly in the amount of rubber that right. they were using and wasteful. But I remember they were like these giant uh, wrestlers that didn't move, but you could sort of like bounce them at each other. Um, if you guys remember those, yeah, those were a, ridiculous. Yeah, I was a huge wrestling fan growing up. I'm a nice. huge wrestling fan. That's a, That was like the first game, I guess, in a way, me and my friend, des- one of the first games we designed, we didn't know it was a game at the time, but we had, I had all my wrestling action figures, and we would draft shows. We would create our own shows, basically. Create our own Featuring matches. The rock. Uh, I guess it wasn't <laughs> truly a game. You didn't win or lose, but like, man, we had, we had so much. We had literally binders full of pages of like notes of uh, like Excel documents we had created to keep track of our rosters and our schedules. We literally go through whole se- We did like six seasons. We, pro- we produced like six seasons of wrestling <laughs> television. Call Vince bedroom. McMahon. It was crazy. Yeah, no, we were obsessed and way too old to be doing it at the time. But yeah, yeah. Loved it. yeah you know, now we've got the perfect time to stay in and play games. Actually. Uh, Eva says, I love dolls and doll house houses and costumes. I wanted to oh, one yeah. of those Barbie cars. Now I think my sister Veronica had one of them big, big old Barbie cars that I probably used to jump ramps with, like <laughs> just. <whoosh. laughs> and by now jump I'm, ramps you mean, like yeah, gently kind of I, stumble I, over I, the curb. I think I was not very gracious and nice to her. Her giant <laughs> pink Barbie car. I think I made it like try to do probably spin not. outs and tricks. <laughs> uh, now I'm just a a, a butch. And love horror things and video games where I rip monsters apart. So it goes. Yes, Hell Eva, yeah. we Hell we yeah. accept you, and you are yeah. part of the club. One of us. <laughs> One of us. Um, I used to Angie's... love those little micro. Uh, I don't know. My sister had them. They were like little micro machines. No, but they were like it was a it was a girl's toy. But they were like the little people that lived in like little. I don't know. Someone might know what they were called. It's never mind. shortcake. They were basically like that. They were cool though. The micro, <laughs> micro ladies. The micro. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Actually, um, they seem like they could get lodged in a throat. Let's see. Polly Pocket, maybe. Were they called Polly Pocket? Polly Pocket. Pocket. That yeah. sounds right. Polly ladies, Pocket. if or guys, if you've played with those, let us know if that's what they were called. Uh, yo, wrestling toys were so dope, especially the ones that we could ta- uh, talk to one another. They were like a foot tall and. Heavy as hell. Yeah, those are the, for WCW. I had the WWF when it was WWF ones way back in the day. Now it's WWE. Good years. Yeah. yeah the, those were... Attitude era. Just so giant and like... Who was your and, favorite and wrestler? My favorite wrestler back in the day? <sighs> the Ultimate Warrior, maybe? Um, I liked... I liked a lot of them. I liked Rowdy Roddy Piper just because yeah. his attitude. I could go down the list. Let's see. I liked Jimmy Superfly Snooker. He was fun. Oh, these are all classics. These, yeah, are, all these are the these are the legends. Andre the Giant, though, you can't beat Andre the Giant. He was fun to love and to hate, and he loved the My fact that he was hated. Uh, if you saw yeah. that documentary that on Andre the Giant, very nice guy. Yeah, he was like the nicest dude. Everybody loved that guy, and then he was just so good at being the villain 
and being the good guy. He was the anti-hero of all of wrestling in the 80s and he was yeah. He and he was willing to take that fall. See, there's a big moment in Andre's career where he was willing to take that fall to pass the torch to Hulk Hogan. And cuz right, Andre right, was yeah. He was the star. He was the biggest guy. He was the unbeatable guy. And I saw that. I remember watching that live where Hulk Hogan body slammed Andre. Andre allowed that to happen oh, and yeah. to pass. It was it was a big moment to see that. Um, Rest, wrestling, but, I think, is an amazing art form and sport. It's like that perfect line between sport and entertainment. And it's like, I, I mean, it doesn't uh, it doesn't hold up so well in an internet age, um, right. unfortunately. Um, especially because you know, I always had that mystique around it where like, yeah. is it real? Is it not? And especially as a younger person, you always like kind of heard the rumors that it wasn't real, but yeah, and it you is just, real. I mean, these people are putting their bodies on the line for our entertainment. They are lifting other people you know, that this, are hundreds of pounds yeah. over their heads and throwing them. They are getting <laughs> hurt. They're yeah. risking their lives. They, people die in the ring. You know, it's, it, it is, you know, the stories are, are fabricated, but it's, it's a real sport and it's, it's, it's it's a real art form for sure. I don't know. Yeah. I, I do find it fascinating. It is uh, it is one of the great American pastimes. Uh, we have confirmation. This just in confirmation. It, it was Polly Pocket. We were talking Elliot. about Polly Pocket. Also, Bratz were also awesome. Condi Land oh, brings up Bratz dolls. Yeah, the Bratz dolls. Do you get? Do you? <laughs> this might be too obscure, but there was a whole situation going on with our favorite Paula Abdul. We've mentioned her a couple times. On the show, Paula, Paula Abdul was going to be in the Bratz movie, and her, she had a reality series, I think, on E. And she was all over. The, she was like, "I am going to be in the new Bratz." Anyway, if you guys remember that, you'll you'll remember the drama surrounding that. It was ridiculous. But uh, how out of touch do you have to be to be like excited about being in a Bratz movie? I mean, you're a little out of touch. You got to be. <laughs> That's not so cool. These days. <laughs> Paula Abdul is Never a gem. Was. <laughs> she's a, she is a gem of a human being we love her season but season one of american idol is a classic all right super classic it's the she only will season always I have that. yeah she'll she'll always have american idol in my she'll always be on america she'll always be a cold heart i'll always be a cold-hearted snake <laughs> to, <laughs> that's a reference to one of her songs you guys will get it Let's see. Let, uh, let's. See. Angie loved Randy Savage. I was gonna say Randy Savage also. Goldberg, Eddie Guerrero. Oh man, Goldberg. Macho, yeah. Um, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. Joe. Uh, Hollywood Hulk. I Hulk. I she liked Hollywood Hulk. I didn't like Hollywood Hulk because that was when he went over to oh, WCW. That was NWO, right? NWO. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. WCW, but N- NWO was like their uh, like their oh. team, I guess. Yeah. Was, they were all the bad guys at the time with the New World Order. I think it was. Randy NWO Savage was cast. an NWO. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember it too well. But yeah, you know I was what? very young. I remember those from like video games. I'm gonna revise my favorite wrestler of all time to Randy Savage because yes. of his sense of humor. That guy yeah. was the funniest mf'er in all of wrestling because he had that character so good. And any question you asked him, he'd come back with an answer. <laughs> <laughs> it was like his arms could I move. I have to so... believe that's just his real like personality, right? Like, there's, there's no no, way. no one back. <laughs> that's just past me who he is. And you know, he was Bone Saw in Spider Man. Bone Saw, yeah. Bones, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna destroy. <laughs> he was always so. He was maximum Macho, intensity, man. all yeah. day. He is a Kevin Nash. He was in NWO, I think. He was cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ange, Ange brings that up. Uh, Will Daddy says, I ran into the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, wait, I ran AV for the Ultimate Warrior at university speaking engagement and backed our lead AV guy when Ben Stein spoke. I asked both, I, I read very slowly, so I asked both of the questions regarding their politics that were open ended enough to out how conservative they were. Warrior was definitely the more militant isolationist conservative. Interesting. He is the ultimate warrior. Uh, I always found it strange that he would tie those things to his biceps. It seemed like very painful. Um, but I didn't realize how he was a militant cons- isolationist conservative. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, wrestling does kind of lend itself to a, a more conservative audience slightly. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a bunch of like yoked dudes <laughs> just trying to like 
perform manliness and beat each other up. <laughs> right. Uh, Performs somewhat, I mean, arguably, <laughs> arguably homoerotic acts on each other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, tried. I was so there... dumb. I mean, I knew, I knew that collegiate wrestling was very different than entertainment wrestling, but like I was into it enough that in high school, I was like, I'm going to try wrestling for a semester because I liked martial arts. I liked, you know, I was like, I'll try. <laughs> Dude, man, it was a lot of boys and not a lot of clothes doing a lot of touching. Yeah. And uh, Which is... I won't say it's <laughs> just perfectly <laughs> you know, natural. It wasn't perfectly for me. I didn't enjoy it a lot. It's Pretty not much your bag. My go to move was like once a dude was on top of me, I just stopped until they got off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really fight too hard. I was like, all right, this guy's. You're I'm like, there's. <laughs> there's a crotch. On my face, I give up. Um, yeah, rest in peace, Ultimate Warrior. Rest in peace, Randy Savage. Rest in peace, Andre. Wrestling dude. is not, you're not long for this world. Chris, uh, who's the dude that did the flying headbutt that also killed his family because he was taking too many steroids? Oh, Chris, uh, Benoit. Benoit. I loved yeah. Benoit. That made me so sad. That was heartbreaking. That is sad. That was truly sad, though. That was a truly yeah. sad. Uh, Unbelievable. You know, Just, whole story sad. Yeah, and and who was the guy that fell? To bring up tragic, the the dude who fell from the rig and died right before Owen WrestleMania. Hart. Yeah, Owen Hart. Yeah, yeah that's that, yeah. insane. That's like the most iconic, I think, wrestling death. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it's truly like. Yeah, it's it's dude. Oh man, I was lucky enough. I got to work on like a promo for WWE last year, uh, before the world fell apart. And uh, we did an interview with Mick Foley, who plays like Mankind and Dude Love and all of those. Uh, all those. And like, man, it was so cool to like just be like in the same room as that guy because that guy's right. taken more punishment than anybody in the history of of the sport. I think. Like, do you, do you remember Mankind with the mask? Uh, I do. Something? He's he's from Long Island. He's a, actually a homie. Oh, okay. uh, not like I don't know him personally, but he's from yeah. like Syosset, like town a few I mean, towns seen, over from where I grew up. Have you seen the clips of like the Undertaker like? choke slamming him like off of the hell in a cell and the man fell like 20 30 feet just straight through a table it's like I, through the hips. i've like, seen so much i've seen that guy take so much damage <laughs> it's insane it's a miracle that he's still alive his brain has to be so ra- i mean it is his brain's rattled but yeah he, he's got holes in his brain at this point for sure that's the sad thing about these like high impact sports people it suffer. is sad brain injuries um which For which is why but also they love it too you know that's the that's the give and take right is that like right you don't do something you don't put yourself through that if you don't love it well that um, reminds me of the movie the wrestler that was actually a really good movie favorite movies of all time yeah it's, it's incredible. a beautiful 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 movie yeah I, especially I, if you're a wrestling fan i think it like as a wrestling fan it really spoke to me like yeah on a deep level i love that movie so much it's great. Darren I, mean, I think Darren Aronofsky did that one. He was supposed to do that RoboCop was... after that, but oh, really? Yeah, that was like Mickey Rourke's big return to cinema, right? Was the wrestler? Mm-hmm. And it was like the perfect role for him, and he did such a great job. Yeah, and uh, who plays the love interest in that? It's um, uh, Marissa Tomei. <clears throat> Marissa Tomei. She's great in it too. That movie's just yeah, that movie's awesome. She's yeah. so hot in that movie. She's oh. she's an incredible. She's an Oscar winning actor. <laughs> she's phenomenal. She's, she's good. Oh, I love her Spider Man too. The new Spider Man. She's so good. As Aunt she's May. great. And those I remember Miss Marissa Tomei. All of them back in the day when they were on a show called A Different World. Some of the fans of the show might remember that. But she was on a show called a Different World with Lisa Bonet. Just very uh, talented and beautiful women back <laughs> when I was a kid watching the spinoff from the Cosby Show. And I was it was a uh, you know, I don't want to objectify these people. Obviously, they're very talented, but um, I would say that I don't think calling somebody beautiful is objectifying them. Personally, uh, if you limit your, if, if you're only discussing their looks, and that's the only thing that matters to you ever, that's objectifying somebody, right? I think it's perfectly okay to say you're somebody is a is a wonderful actress, probably a lovely person, and I also have to be quite attractive. And I'm saying Jason Listen, Momoa is a lucky if man. If the people That's watching it. me right now were to say, man, that guy's a hottie. <laughs> I realize there, it's different. I'm a man. I realize there's a gender difference, but I will take it gladly. <laughs> you, can say I, you, can, you can 
can say whatever you want about me. If you compliment me in any way, really, I'll love you. <laughs> Fair enough. Just, just tell me I'm. Just tell me you like me, please. <laughs> this is all I need. We just need like points. We need. We need to be like that episode of Black Mirror <laughs> where everybody's rated in real time, which yeah, I cannot finish watching that episode. The Bryce Dallas Howard episode of Black Mirror where yeah. everybody got like real time ratings yeah, and likes. It's not- not science fiction it's it's the world we live in right it's totally real yeah. i don't play those I think, games i don't like i don't i don't i don't do facebook i don't do all that bullshit fair enough it does you feel do good instagram. To get on instagram post though right i don't get that many but it does feel nice <laughs> it does it, it is a good uh it's a good reinforcer yeah it of, feels nice uh, feel <laughs> of, of serotonin it's kind of nice to be hated a little bit too though right not hated, but like it's nice if everyone loved you. Provocative. You something wrong too. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's there's some truth to that. I'll, I'm t- I'm too agreeable. I should be so I should be I should fight with you on this. You must be pretty well loved, right? I can't imagine anybody not liking Mr. Aristotle Full Throttle. Then that's that's very sad. I should probably try to piss more people off. You should start uh, stopping MF or <laughs> stop saying I should MF. say, this, what's it, MF dude. and the kiss my big black stuff? <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines from Eddie Murphy Raw. Am I allowed so to say good. let your nut hang? Let your nut hang, dude. It's your show. Swang them. Um, no, I, I will get into it. If there, if there are people who start to like throw around hateful rhetoric and start to be that way, like I've gotten into it a couple times slightly with some people in the chats who have like crashed the room and I'm like, you know what? But it, fundamentally, I'm just like, you're just trying to be a provocateur. You're not actually interested in an exchange of ideas. So there's no, there's nothing. I think. It's yeah. interesting. I, I don't know. As I'm starting my little Discord and trying to like, kind of think of a brand, kind of for that potential business venture, maybe down the road. It, it there is like kind of a conundrum between like being authentic to who you are as like a entrepreneur, and especially like in a business where you're trying to relate to people as yourself. You know, it's yeah. you're not creating some random product to send a market. You're trying to be a piece of your brand and be a, a piece of what people are drawn to. There is definitely that, like, how much of myself do I want to be? How, uh, you know, do I want to curse? Do I want, I don't know. I'm my, I intellectually, I'm like, you should play it safe. But I think my gut is telling me, like, I think as it, as we move more and more into this future where we are kind of our own products, sadly enough, to some degree, it's kind of scary to think of. Right the world that way but it is kind of the reality i think to some degree that's what we are. we're trending toward that's what we this are world our own is. you gotta yeah. be so much is automated that there's no like actual world in which we can do manual labor as much or or something it, like that audiences are so divided that like i don't i think that that notion of appealing to a broad audience and um it is kind of a dinosaur and really, it's yeah. like you have to just be yourself to some degree and hope that an audience finds you. I think. I think like we yeah. people can smell bullshit from a mile. And for you, it is authentic. I think. I think for you, it is authentic to kind of be somewhat more polite, somewhat more, you know, um, <laughs> respectful. I think. Yeah. I think that, that as someone well, who knows you, that is a, a, those are positive traits you have that I don't have well, quite thanks. as. I'm not. I'm not, That's that wouldn't be authentic. <laughs> I, I could never yeah. not curse like right now all i want to do is just string expletives together right? like i i i do not censor any guests you're allowed to do it's yeah. a free-for-all uh but thank well, you that is for... a part of being a mature adult i guess is trying to not just you know well i just say you know oh. it's, it's, it's still be a dick that's all <laughs> it seems pretty simple to me but uh you guys in the chat room you guys are making us blush you guys are being very kind and, and sweet with Aww, your compliments they are? i can't yeah. read it which is good because my ego doesn't need it <laughs> <laughs> They're very, they're being very sweet. And, oh, uh, thank you. Uh, they said that we're, that we're both handsome and that, that makes me uh, blush. I'm going to, I'm going to hide couple. behind my baby, baby Yoda. Yeah, thank we you very much. Couple. This is what I look like without a beard. Guys, <laughs> you guys are very sweet and, and kind. And I think that we've all found each other here, which is a cool spot to land for all of us. And, uh, I'm very thankful to have everyone who's are the people watching uh, on your discord already most of them do you know a lot of people have jumped over to discord and it's really cool to uh see the discussions going on there there's a lot of really fun uh drops you could drop whatever you like in there anything you find fun anything be, uh, you find interesting 
I'll try to be a little more active on your Discord. I haven't checked it out too much, but I'm Gonzo it's, Game Design on, on Discord. So if you yeah. see that name. I can share, I don't know if you can share that link, but if you'd like to share that link, I can, I can drop I'll, it into. I, I got to join the community. I got to join the Aristotle Full Throttle Nation. Do you have oh, a name for your, for your fans yet? Throttlers? I, throttlers, right. yeah. You don't like That's throttlers? So no. I like throttlers because it sounds, it's got like a triple meaning. <laughs> okay. You know, the way you, when you say it, it sounds better than when I say it. When I say it, it sounds gross for whatever reason. Throttlers. <laughs> it, can, it can sound gross depending on how it it's said. Gross, yeah. <laughs> it's totally my next is like full uh, full boys and full girls that's worse so i don't know aristotlers philosophers aristotlers <laughs> Arist Tot Tot toddlers <laughs> i like that yeah you're toddlers that's good i feel like that that's I feel like that's like mumford and sons type aristotlers is a good, <laughs> it's a great name it feels like they're not everyone here is on equal playing field we're not toddlers yeah. unless we all yeah, no. <laughs> we're the muppet babies uh we can do eva's got a gonzo today, tattoo one day. one day indeed. oh hell yeah gonzo is the best speaking of dnd Gon the name uh, gonzo was my first uh my first big uh dnd character that i fell in love with that i'm still attached to was uh he was actually a magician funnily enough uh he was a wizard ma magician type named the great garbanzo and he was huh? shortened to gonzo he went by gonzo um yeah and he had a little dwarf apparition friend named bonzo and uh yes yeah, so i was just like i'll name it after him and i think it's cool too i like you know gonzo uh, journalism and gonzo art is all kind of stuff that's kind of right in my wheelhouse so i don't know it's the name for now we'll see i should that's be more i need to be more yeah that's my name but yeah <laughs> uh gonzo. we've got a second on the throttlers as being it's uh will says it's better than dialectics Hey, what's up, my dialectics? <laughs> Aristotle in my Nicomachean ethics. I guess Throttlers is so bad. I don't know. I'm, I'm working. On, we'll see. I think Throttlers, like, we'll have a vote. Plus syllables. There could be, here's what we'll do over the weekend. We'll propose the name for what we want to call the group, I guess. Aris Throttlers. Aris Throttlers? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and then we little, can vote on it. You gotta get a little community growing, though. It's awesome. I am very happy and proud to be a part of this community. It's really awesome. Hey, Everybody is involved in, and they're super. Yeah. Yes, and and now we are all, we are all one. We shall join the collective and yes. patch our. One of us. <laughs> I'll be Morpheus. Will this you take the, the red pill or the blue pill? <laughs> Dude, if we ever remake Matrix in our way. lifetimes, I could see you as a. I could see you as a as a Morpheus in like. 10, 15, can, 20, 30 years. I don't know. Depends how old well our do Morpheus it. is. In universe, but, you know, I could see you. I could see you yeah. playing a mean Morpheus. He is the one. <laughs> it's so good. He's... We'll, find a, we'll find a new cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole edition. Uh, I, yeah. I'll play Morpheus. And I would definitely play Morpheus. I like when Morpheus is, uh, he's in those, this is my favorite part of the Matrix, one of my favorite parts, where he's got the, he's got the handcuffs and he's like, and then he breaks oh, yeah. the handcuffs, and then he runs for the window. That's so cool. He's the, he's the dude that betrays them all. Cyrus? No, it's not. What's the uh, guy's name? Uh, Cipher. Cipher. Yeah. That's me. I play Cipher. You could play. You could play Cipher for sure. I definitely like. I don't. I. I don't want to be Cipher, but I feel like I. <laughs> Cipher is the most like in my wheelhouse. Let's be honest. I, I don't want to be here, but uh, yeah. uh I definitely I am be here. Judas, but... I'm Judas. <laughs> yeah. I'll just be like quietly yes, walking Judas around with my arms folded behind my back and glasses with no ear things. I guess, yeah, right. I guess it's pretty like, it's pretty accepted widely that the Matrix is kind of a Jesus story. I guess it is uh, kind of a Jesus Cypher, story. Cypher is definitely Judas. Neo is definitely Jesus. Neo Morpheus. could be played by Will. Trinity could be uh, played by Ange. We got the whole cast right here. We sure do. We can film it over Zoom. Yeah, we can. <laughs> exactly. We should make the first movie filmed on Zoom. I wonder what Ron thinks about that, actually. Uh, the Church of Ron is Ron's religion. We could all Ooh, join that. We can call I'm a, I'm We can call my followers, the Aristotle Full Throttle or followers, the Church of Ron. <laughs> <laughs> it makes perfect sense, really. It really does. 
Um, I have a feeling there's already a Ronald Reagan militia and cult, respectively, bearing each of those names. I'm sure there is. Or a Parks and Rec uh, fan group, Church of Ron. I'd, I'd, I could see that being a thing. Uh, yeah, that would that's actually the Swansons. That definitely work. Swansons, swan songs. What is something? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have a hard think about that. I do. I do like the Throttlers. It's been the thing that's kind of stuck for years. I don't know if people seem to like it or hate it or whatever. Indifferent. Let us know. Um, if you guys want to follow Travis, he's on Travis Thompson Film on Instagram, and uh, I guess one day maybe I'll have, I'll have more things for you yeah. guys to follow. Hopefully, one day. No worries. We gotta take it, our time, it, you know, in the pandemic. We gotta yeah. things move slow. Things move slow. Do just one thing a day if you can. That's kind I mean, of, that's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah, it's not I, so a lot. We're used to living in a world pre-pandemic where we go, we're like, let's go to work and then let's build a deck and then let's yeah. cook dinner. You know, it's like there's so many things in the I day that we were. I was far too fast-paced before all this. I yeah, and now, really... well, the proof of concept is you can be productive because a lot of times we do a lot of things and we're not productive. And I think yeah. the, the thing we need to really kind of zero in on is how to feel okay <laughs> with getting one thing done instead of doing a little bit of a lot of things. So yeah, I, I mean, to tie we... in gaming one, one final time, there is a concept of like decision fatigue, uh, where when you, I, I don't know, it's probably not strictly related to gaming, but it is something we talk about in game design. And we were definitely, we definitely had decision fatigue, fatigue before this, right? Like there was so many things I could be doing at any given t time. Like, just between work, social life, personal life, romantic life, like oh, there was just so many balls to juggle that it was, it became like, it was overwhelming often to figure out like, what am I supposed to prioritize at any given moment yeah. in my day? And that still is a problem to some degree in, in quarantine, but it's alleviated to the extent that like, I can actually sit back and be like, what do I want to prioritize today? Let me take five, 10 minutes and think about it. Let's make yeah. some actual decisions <laughs> yeah. about what I, how I want to live this one life that I have on this planet. So live I think that's something life. we can hopefully, hopefully we can continue to, uh, to do when this all is over, is to be more thoughtful about yeah. how, we, uh, how we spend our limited time. I'm sure some of you do that already. I'm, I'm new to the party. I'm growing up. I'm trying to grow. Wise, <laughs> wise words yeah. from Travis Thompson. And uh, I think we should spend lots more time painting our blue pants silver yeah. and playing yeah. tabletop dude games. I'm going to get you into it one day, you know? You can do a whole live stream. I would love I to do it sure. because I would like to be the guy learning how to do a thing. And um, it and seems like love, a lot of fun. You love these franchises, dude. Star Wars, yeah. Marvel. Like, I could get you hooked on some of the shit, I'm sure, just because the character, that's that's the beauty of these franchises, right? It's the worlds yeah. and the characters. It doesn't matter how we interact with them. We just want to interact with them, right? And it's the story, and it's building the story. And, like, and you know, every little thing you do each day is building the story of your life. <laughs> and that's yeah, important. Yeah, man. Don't fuck it up. Yeah, don't, don't okay. make a false it's move. Okay. Don't be bandersnatch and jump out the window first Our thing. lives are stories with many beginnings. Thank you guys for joining us. This has been awesome. Thank you, Travis, so much for joining me on Dude, the show. Thank you. I appreciate you. Follow Travis. Uh, Travis, send me that link to your Discord, if you will, and I'll drop it in my Discord as an invite to everybody. And everybody sure. on the platforms, here's the Discord link again if you want to continue the conversation. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful, restful, or productive, or... Uh, angst-ridden weekend <laughs> actually no i don't want you to have an angst-ridden weekend i would like you to have a relaxing time reflecting and and or boogie boarding i endorse it all as all in right. the words of randy macho man savage oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. i'm gonna snap into a slim gym okay guys <laughs> thank you so much this has been awesome and uh i'll see you all on monday and ron you're gonna be our guest on tuesday I appreciate you too. Thank you for chiming in. Ange, Eva, Ron, Tatiana, Will, K Ferg, all of the all the throttlers. Will says he's got years invested in being a throttler, so this thing might stick. Good right. good, bad, or ugly. I guess but, I guess the decision has been made. The decision it has come down upon us. The decision is made. I'm Aristotle. Full throttle. 
your bro in the know with the fro. And I'll see you. I'm Travis. <laughs> and you will see Travis. Am I supposed some... to sign off? You, you can sign, tell off, me sign, off. sign off. Give us give us a sign off. Give us your best sign off. But like WWF style. <laughs> when I see you in the ring and I put you on the mat, you will know my name is Travis. <laughs> that's, that's what you get. Love you. Bye.